Ah, uh, thank you. God bless you. I'm happy to to be alive and to to know that uh, God has really taken care of me, and my heart is set apart, my body, my life for Him. And we are now going to share on your vision must win. That is part three now. And God, you really bless. Last time we shared on anointing for all boldness. The, uh, another level of anointing, which calls for anointing for full boldness. For, that is to keep the vision. But the Bible says in Psalms 118 verse 17. How, how are you saying this? If you go to Psalms uh, 118, and I hope hey, we are there now. Hmm. The Bible says, Psalms 118, verse 17, I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but live. There's grace of God. Because if you check verse 19 says, verse 18 says, the Lord has just chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. I know we may not go to that, but the issue is, is the word of God in its power saying, I will not die. Whatever you are going, whatever the writer of Psalms underwent is clear. But now God is speaking to me today. I should not die. Why should I live? I'm not just living to be seen to live. I'm living to declare the works of God. There are works to be declared. One of the purposes of living, if you choose the best option, or you open yourself to God, who has the final word, is that God wants to be known. The world is full of light, especially about God. Uh, you know, one day I was in America and I went to a shop. I went to buy an iPhone. And I asked that lady, oh, do you know God? Uh, doesn't want to hear the word God. Doesn't, who is he? I said, now, I asked her, what happens on Christmas? Where do you go? Which Christmas? Oh, that day, yes. I spent time with my God, uh, with, with my dog. She spent time with her dog. The day exists, and people are talking about holiday, but it has no godly meaning. It's just a day to spend time with the dog, not even with any other human being. And it's funny. Uh, another day, um, Somebody visited from, from Europe and uh, he had come to visit one of our businessmen in the church. And he was requested to go to the church. He said, what do you mean by church? And, because, and they said, why, can we pray for... Why? The, the person said, can we pray for food? Who, why do we pray? Who is God? Are, you know, there's, there's something I see today in this world. And God is looking for people who are not going to die. Or if you are supposed to die, God, you add you another season. A season of grace. A season of favor. A season may be, if you check your natural life, it's extra. You are not, you, a season where you'll be able to say, truly speaking, I would have died many years ago, but God decided to allow me to live in this season. A season of grace, favor from God. Where you say, I have now discovered I'm not dying. But not just to live and eat, live flesh, sleep, go out, come back. No, I have a project. I'll remain in God's presence. I'll be so close to God. Because if you are going to declare the works of God, you, could, you are supposed to be so close to God. Let me introduce you something. Whenever God adds you a season or God commands a season in your life, 
by his grace. You need to be now very close to him. He is the owner and the sustainer of that extra season. And he has a purpose for it. And the purpose for the new season can only be effective or enjoyed when you stay closer to God, the owner and the giver of that season. I'm living longer to declare the works of God. Personally, I don't have them. I need to be closer to God, so close for God to, for God to fulfill in a very comfortable way the purpose for my living. Which purpose? I want to declare the works of God. You know, the works of God are not known. People are seeing their own works and they wonder, where is God? I remember one day, there was this professor and um, of course, she had, her, she had her own own philosophy and theology. And there was a pathist. Whenever you gather and you want to pray for food, you say, no, why pray for food? Why thank God for food? Who is that God? And you say, thank nature. Nature has provided food. And she will look through the window and say, nature, you provided food. They are talking about God, nature, mother, nature, which is my name. But now, I believe with all my heart, I'm living this time, and you are living whatever setting you are living with. We seek the face of God, become friends of God, be set apart by God. Be ordained directly by God for a purpose. David was set apart in his time to restore the honor, the standard of God in, the, in Israel. And the first assignment that of anointing him is that he found, he found Goriath eh, mocking the people, the armies of the living God. And David had time to show, to declare the works of God. When he killed Goliath, and all men of Israel rose up in strength, saying, we have won battle through David. I think we need to be equipped by God now. There is shame around the society. There is a lot of shame all over. All over. All over, there's nothing like prayer or sensitivity to God. Majority, part of the world. And I know one of the things that will cause my vision to win is that God is giving another, another strength, extraordinary favor. God is bringing me, giving to me, another level of purpose, realization of purpose, that I'm supposed to declare his works. Not ordinary works, his works. And that's very important. And by the grace of God, God you bless us. Now, I'd like us to... Uh, there's, the other day, I shared about Peter. When Peter walked on water. And Peter... Uh, let me read that. I think it's the book of Matthew. Let me look, look, look at that very quickly by God's grace. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, I think, verse... Yes... Oh, 29, verse, Matthew 14, verse 29. So he came. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. To go to Jesus. Now, I'd like us to extract a statement from the mouth of Peter that is very important if my vision is going to win. Peter, for him to come out of the boat and trust God beyond natural laws that he could walk on water, it's what was based on only one thing. Peter said uh, in verse 28, Peter answered to him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Christ said, come. 
It's me. Come. There are stages in our vision that we succeed because it is him. Lord, if it is you who caught me, let these people know you are alive. That's why Elijah took the mantle. He did not know how to receive the double portion, but he just took the mantle after the exit of Elijah. And he went back to the same liver where the mantle had operated before and water separated. And said, and struck the water and said, where is the God Lord of Elijah? And it happened. And now Elijah confirmed, surely the power has not gone with that man. It is around me. And he was equipped. And there are areas in our walk. We just tell God, God, if it is you who caught me, let these people know you are alive. If it is you who caught me, vindicate me before my enemies. If it is you who caught me, Lord, confirm your presence allowed this family. If it is you who caught me, Lord, just allow me to speak. Allow me, Lord, to minister. Let your works be known through my hands. If it is you, let me walk on this water. And Peter walked in the water, on the water, not because he had faith originating from himself. He had faith focusing on Christ. Let me advise you, advise us all. There are times when faith cannot emanate from your heart. Your heart cannot generate enough faith. You need Jesus now. You need to focus on Christ and now build your faith not on who you are, but who Christ is. If it is you, let me walk on water. If it is you, let these demons be, be silent. If it is you, let that man know you are alive. If it is you, Lord. My faith is not subjective. It's not the way I am. It's not based on the way I feel. It's not based on my personality. Peter as a person could not walk on water. Peter in his own faith as Peter as a person, that faith was not enough, sufficient enough to make him walk on water. But the faith Peter has is external. It has an external connection. Jesus, it is you. Now, from where you are, the way you are, and the way you speak, and the way you are great, if you just say, I walk on water, I know I walk on water. There's faith born by confirmation of God. There's faith born by God putting a seal on you. Whereby there are places in your vision where God will need to speak. Lord, speak a word and my, your servant will just obey. Lord, give me direction in this place. And whatever you say, I'll just obey. It is faith born in stages of your work in your vision where God spoke a word and you obeyed. I did not have sufficient faith for the next season, but as God, as, as I opened myself to God, God spoke, and whatever he said was a command that made me walk and have new strength for the challenges I'm facing in the next part of my vision. And I want to say this by God's grace. If it is him, walk on water. If it is him, rise up and go. Open that business. If it is him, now, keep that marriage. If it is him, know that your son is coming back. If it is him, know that your mother who is sick is rising again. If it is him who has spoken, know that however complicated issues are, are very soon coming to be uh, to have simplicity and a way out. If it is Christ who has spoken, know that 
the person who is almost dead will come back just as Christ has spoken. Yes, Peter walked on water just as Christ was walking on water. Even when he drowned in the water, Jesus restored him back and they walked together. One thing I noticed, when Christ said come, he walked on water. When his faith fell, he raised him. And now they both walked together to the boat. And therefore by God's grace, those parts of the vision that requires that are very important. And God will bless you. Another thing is that we need to focus on God's word. God focus on his word. Let me say something. God, the way God works, even if you are in a desert, what you keep you is what God said about you. God focuses on his word. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, as part of God's calling, God had to tell Jeremiah, Jeremiah, one thing that discipline I would like you to have concerning God is that he will always hasten to perform his word. Not to perform any man's word, but to perform his word. That is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. If you go to Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, let me read that verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was always rebellious not to turn away. I want to say this something. God talks about the tongue of the learned. Now, he has given me the tongue of the learned. How did I acquire that tongue? That I should know how to speak. Now, how to speak? This tongue of the learned person is a tongue that is set by God to know how to speak his word and for him and win. One thing that I like to say is this about the word of God. God you set your mouth in a certain standard that we call that mouth the tongue of the learned. How? how? That I should know how to speak. One thing that makes your vision win is that God you make your tongue the tongue of a learned person. That whichever person you face or situation you encounter, you should know how to speak. A word of season to him who is weary. God has given me a learned tongue that I should know how to speak. A word in season to whom he is weary, who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. That is one aspect of a person that God you use within his word. And if we continue a little bit further, that is Jeremiah 55. Uh, that is Isaiah 55. Let me read verse 11. So my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish, accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And therefore, any man who will succeed and the vision becomes a vision that wins, you must have Focus on the word that comes from the mouth of God. And have a learned tongue to speak it. So that the Bible says 
The word that comes from his mouth. Make sure you, you are so clear about it. That this is what God said. God says he will hasten to perform it. It shall not return to him void. It shall accomplish what God pleases. It shall prosper in the thing for which it was sent. And that's what will happen to your vision that must win. It must have a clear, clear breakthrough, a clear discernment of what God said. For what God said, he will move very quickly to perform it. And God will make sure that word prosper in the thing for which he sent it. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord make your vision win from today. Amen.